I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, let's just call for that daily bread now. Praise God. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive something? Are you ready to receive a miracle today? Let me tell you this. Even though, you know, you know maybe you walk, but you don't have to wait to wait till the end of the month before you get something. What do you need today? Praise God. Just simply ask Him. Are you ready? Let's go. Say, Father. No, say it with me. Say, Father, today I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Expect a miracle now. Truly expect a miracle. Praise God. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. pray. Father, we bless you for today's broadcast. Thank you. Every ear listening right now, everyone under the influence of my voice right now, thank you, Holy Spirit. As your word is coming forth, burdens are being lifted from them, yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The yoke of sickness is gone from you in the name of the Lord Jesus. It is broken. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Be free from every yoke. Be free from every yoke right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every chain that I've held you bound on one spot. I command you to be free from that chain right now. In Jesus mighty name. I pray. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. We are contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Now, now this is what the disciples understood. And, and, and that's why you see the, the way and manner they lived their lives. They were owing only one person their lives. And that is Jesus. You know, remember the disciples, they, they, they got to the point where they, they, they called them into the assembly and the scribes and, and high priests and, and called them together. I said, look, hey guys, you've got to stop preaching in this man's name. Stop it. And you know, you know, not the funny, these, these were religious people, you understand? So they were not saying, come and serve idols, stop serving God, come on. No, no, no. They, they didn't have a problem with God. They had a problem with Jesus. Why would Jesus come and claim that he is the son of God? Do you know what I'm, but it's, it, it's not amazing. Now they believe the scriptures had prophesied that the Messiah will come. But they couldn't accept it that the Messiah was living amongst them. You, you know, sometimes it, it, it happens to us. You just feel it's too good to be true. No, it, it can't be. Something that is you know, is being taught something far away. And then it's, it's right before your eyes. Come on, get out of here. You know that? You're just like, well, I mean, what, what are you talking about? Can it be like that? You know, I tell folks sometimes, I say, hey, do you know, Jesus is so real. I want you to understand this. Jesus is so real that he can actually step into the earth without noise, without, without, without fanfare, you know, without us looking up the cloud and seeing one bright light coming. No, I mean, he can just quietly you know, come. I mean, come bodily. I mean, he's that real. He said, ah, yeah, why can't he go to everyone? You know, I, I, I prayed one time, you know, I was talking to the Lord. I said, I've shared this with you. I was talking to the Lord and I said, Lord, but Lord, you, you, I feel you lost an opportunity. He said, what opportunity? I mean, you would have made our whole work easy. When you rose from the dead, you should have just gone to everyone, you know, all those people that didn't believe you. 
Just go to them and say, hey, look at me. I'm Jesus. Look at my hand. See the hole? You understand? And then the Lord spoke to me and said, no, I couldn't have done that. I'm like, why? He said, because I only appeared to those who could hear me. You see, because when, when Jesus rose from the dead, he rose in his glory, in the fullness of his glory. And the fullness of his glory is him being the word of God. See? So, no one can hear him. Only those that can hear the voice of God. You see, because he would show up before you. And you won't even know. Until he speaks. Now, when he speaks, only those who know his voice. You remember in John chapter 8, Jesus was talking to the Jews one time and he said to them, why do you not understand my speech? And they said, it is because you cannot hear my words. Why don't you understand my speech? I will tell you why. It's because you don't hear my words. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. They don't hear his voice on the inside. So they don't understand his speech. They don't understand what he is speaking about. So, he, you know, just like sometimes you say something, you know, everybody's looking at you like, what I say? Are you okay? What, what, what do you mean by that? Are you, are, you, are you out of your mind? Why? But you know what you're saying is true. You know you've got testimony concerning it. Now, this is not just, you know, there, are, there, are, there are revelations that are, that are motivated by an expansion of your deep thoughts. See? But true revelation is given to you. You don't, you don't think it out. No, it is given to you. I can sit down here and start postulating and call it revelation. But true revelation is given to you. That's the Spirit of God visits you. He, he teaches you. And guess what? And he's, You see, what happens is the teaching becomes so clear that you see it. And then when you see it, it becomes easy to explain to everybody. Now, when you get to that point where nobody can even understand what you're explaining, only you are the one believing that what you're saying is true. So now you begin to convince other people to believe like you, even, even though they don't understand. You just tell them that, look, this thing is for a matured mind. And then they believe, okay, so we're not mature, but let's keep going one day. Hey, 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 that's the spirit of error going somewhere to happen. That's not the Holy Spirit. See? He teaches. And the Bible says the, the wisdom that is from above is first pure, is peaceable, is easy to be entreated. So when, when, when the Lord teaches you stuff, when he gives you revelation and you begin to share it, guess, guess the response you're going to get. So I'm like, for real? You mean this thing is this easy? <laughs> and I've been stressing myself all this while. Yeah, that's what happens when, when the truth comes. Because Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So when, you, when the truth is heard, you just look at it and say, man, who deceived me all this while? Because this is so simple. How come I couldn't figure it out? How come I couldn't see it? Yes, because your eyes were blinded to it. Now truth has come, the veil. See, it is so easy the, the veil has to be used to cover you so you don't see it. Now, when that veil is taken away, you see things plainly, praise God. Yeah, that's the truth. You see everything plainly and then you go, whoa, wow, whoa. <laughs> that's what you mean. Whoa. And not, well, I even if I don't, you know, it's so funny. You see people do that sometimes. They're like, do you? You know, sometimes you, you sit down here and you, 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 you're, you're, you're asking someone, you're looking at someone, you, know, you just, do you understand what he's saying? Well, I don't really understand, Sha, but I believe one day I will understand. Come on now. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. You know, one of Job's friends said this when he, he was talking to Job. He said, there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. And that's the truth. That's the truth. The Spirit of God will not share something with you that you cannot understand. So why is he sharing it with you? 
So when I say, I, I, I believe the Lord is teaching me, but just I cannot understand it now. <laughs> no, he's not teaching you. You're hearing something else. Why should I come to visit you and share something with you that you cannot understand? Can you see? It's, it's error going somewhere to happen. So be mindful of, of those things. Praise God. So we're looking at this from Ephesians. And, and we, we're looking at the point of maturity. Now, if we're contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, then we've got to be concerned about our growth. We've got to be concerned about our maturity. Now, that's why I brought you to this Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11. Now, yesterday we stopped at verse, verse 13. And then look at verse 14, it says, That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and calling craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Verse 15 says, But speaking the truth in love. Did you see that? Speaking the truth in love. Sometimes, People are afraid to speak the truth. Now, why are they afraid to speak the truth? Because even they themselves have not been perfected in love, which is God. See? Because God is love. So when he says speaking the truth in love, he says speaking the truth in God. So you get to that place where you are perfected in love that you just know that there is no other thing to say but the truth. So you speak the truth. You are not afraid. You no, know, someone say, I, 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 I'm just scared. If I, if I tell them the truth, what they would do. No, 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 no. You are no more scared. Because when you are scared, the Bible says, He that feareth is not made perfect in love. It's as simple as that. So one of the, the points of growth that you will recognize as a child of God is that your boldness to speak the truth. And you are not speaking the truth because you are more knowledgeable than the others. Rather, you are speaking the truth in love. You're speaking the truth is the demonstration of love that you have. So you are not speaking the truth so everybody will know that this person is wrong. No, you are speaking the truth that they and he and everyone will come into that knowledge of the truth. And it may be well with them, see? That's the difference. So it's not a knowledge con contest. It is knowing the truth that we may all become. It says, speaking, that's why it says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things. You see that now? So I'm speaking the truth to you and my desire for speaking the truth to you that you and I will grow up into all things. Now, what is this truth? This truth is not what I read somewhere. This truth is the truth that he said, I am the truth. So, so I'm speaking based on what he has told me, what he has taught me, praise God. And I'm sharing it out of love. Hey, this is what the Lord told me. See, you know, you know many things like that. It's like when it comes to Titan, I'm so passionate about it. You know why? Because cause, cause that's the answer to everything. <laughs> you, you know, you know, it's, I'm so passionate about it <laughs> when I talk about Titan. Yeah, because I see this work every day, every day. Every day. And, and I see people around me share their testimonies also. Hey, this is it. And, and what are we talking about? You, know, you take your tithe before the Lord and say, Lord, you've blessed me. Thank you. I've got your money with me. What would you have me do with it? You know the sweetest part in it? The sweetest part in this is in, when, when I get feedbacks and, and someone says, ah, I decided to tithe like, like you thought. And I, I, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah, it's so beautiful for the first time i i i actually asked god and god actually directed me now this is the testimony that came out of it I'm like yep that's it that is it now no man is involved where men are involved is in the receiving and the giving of the testimony praise god but but you see christ controls this whole thing and then we are all realizing wow he loves us 
He loves you. And you see, that's, that's, that's the end of the story. That God loves you. The one who receives like, wow, God loves me. The one who gave like, wow, God loves us. Praise <laughs> God. Holy cow, My time is up. You know, sometimes you just wish we just kept, keep talking and talking for hours. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are indeed growing in all things, growing into you and manifesting that glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you are in the city of Abuja, I want to see you this evening. The address is on the screen. I want to see you. I'm inviting you for a wonderful time of fellowship today. God bless you. Bye.